example, in this video, we're going to discuss more about quadric surfaces. I have done a few videos earlier, so you can check them out. They will be on the description box. Let's dive into our first example. We need to put this equation in standard form so we can identify what type of surface it is. So I'm going to group the x terms and the y terms and z terms next to each other. So this one and this one, I'm going to put them next to each other. For y, there's no other term other than 4y squared. But for z, I can group this one and this one together. The constant term, we're going to move it to the other side. So we got negative x squared minus a plus 4x, because that's the linear factor for x. So plus 4x. Leave a space since we're going to complete the square. Plus 4y squared. Then for the z, we got 4z squared minus 8z. And plus 4, we're going to move that to the other side. So that's minus 4. Now to complete the square for this variable, uh, we're going to factor out a negative 1. So that's going to give us the following. So if you factor out a negative 1, then this needs to be negative. So we're going to put a negative sign here. So we don't change the problem. Now we take half of our linear term, which is this, negative 4. Take half of it, you get 2 when you square the positive 4. So we're going to add 4 here. And overall, we added a negative 4. So we need to add a negative 4 here. So just subtract 4 to keep the equation balanced. Now for the z variable, we need to factor out a 4 from both of these terms. So we're going to force out a 4. That means this can be written as 4 times z squared minus 2z. Because if you redistribute, you'll get negative 8z. So without changing the question, we rewrite. That means now we take half of our linear term, so half of negative 2 is 1. When you square it, you get 1. So we add 1, but overall we added a 4 times 1, so I need a plus 4 on the right-hand side. So now our x variable is going to factor into x minus 2 all squared, carry out the negative sign, plus 4 y squared. And the z variable is going to factor into z minus 1 squared is equal to and these, you just combine them. So uh, this will cancel. So you just have negative 4. So you want to turn this number into a positive number and also divide by negative 4. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. So you'll have, um, for the x variable, you'll have a positive number as a, its coefficient. So you'll have x minus 2 squared over 4 minus y will be negative. So 4 over 4 cancels. You just get y squared. And z will also be negative. So negative 4 cancels. will be z minus 1 squared is equal to 1. So that is how you write this equation in standard form. So now since this equation in standard form contains two negative signs, it means this is a hyperboloid of two sheets. So this is, we're calling this surface hyperboloid of two sheets. So that's the name of the surface and the center of this surface is going to be the following. An x component will be two, y component is zero, z component is one. And if you sketch it, just make a rough sketch in the x, y, z plane. So here's your x, y, and z. Let's plot the center first. So um, in x direction, we go two units. In y direction, we don't move. In z direction, we go up one. So I can imagine it somewhere to be right up here. So just up one. So this point, let's label it two, zero, one. And then um, we can now draw the uh, hyperbolas. So in x direction, we're going to go two units from that center, since this number four in the standard form can be written as 2 squared. So that, that's really all you need to create the hyperbolas. So in x direction, you're going to go two units left and right. So 1, 2. So there you have your uh, first hyperbola. And then the second hyperbola with two units backward. So it will be right here. So something like that. And then um, now we're going to trace uh, ellipses or circles inside these hyperbolas or so something like that.
And then here too, you're going to trace ellipses of this style. So and this is what we're looking. So of course it extends in both directions. So let me try to do better for this one. So perhaps we can do something like that. So it gives you a better view of how the picture looks like. So this is what we call an hyperboloid of two shifts. Now to be specific, we can label these vertices. So this one is four, uh, zero, one. And this vertices right here, so in X, it's going to be zero, Y is zero, but Z is one. So that makes our graph a little bit more clear. Now let's go ahead and try another um, equation. So here, again, we're going to put this in standard form, identify what kind of surface it is, and we'll try to make a rough sketch of it. So um, let's complete the square. So, uh, so it looks like X doesn't have any linear term. So X is alone. Y has a linear term. So we're going to group them next to each other. Z is also alone, no linear term. The constant, you can move it to the right-hand side. So we got negative x squared, and then we got 4y squared minus 16y, um, leave a space, minus z squared is equal to negative 20. And now we're going to complete this square here, but first we're going to factor out a 4. So you'll have uh, the following. So you'll have 4 times y squared minus 4y, leave a space. So again, recheck your answer by redistributing that you have the given terms. And we do, so that's good. Now we can complete the square. So here I'm going to add the extra number. I take half of this and I square it. So that's uh, two, negative two squared, that's four. So overall, we added four times four. Keep it balanced, we add four times four on the right-hand side. And now we're ready to write this in perfect square. We got negative x squared plus four times y minus two squared, because this will factor into that. And the z again uh, on its own z squared is equal to, so four times four, we know that's gonna be 16. So negative 20 plus 16, that's negative four. And now our goal is to make this a positive one. So we're going to divide everything by negative four. So divide both sides by negative four. So now the x variable will turn positive, x squared over four. Y variable will simply be negative, four cancels, it's just y minus two squared. Z variable will also be positive, so that's z squared over four equals to one. Now this is your standard form where you can identify the center of it. Now since this surface contains one negative sign, every term, every variable has power of two equals to a constant, we call this hyperboloid of one sheet. So this is going to be called hyperboloid of one sheet. So let's go ahead and write down its center and we're going to come up with a possible rough sketch. So the center, the X coordinate is zero, the Y coordinate is two, and the Z coordinate is going to be zero. So zero to zero. And um, now since y contains negative sign, the shape will be along y axis. So here's my rough sketch of this uh, picture. So here's my x, y, and z. Here's x, here's y, here is z. If you want, you can draw the negative axis right here. This is negative z, this is negative x, this is negative y. Let's plot the center first. So we have zero, two, zero. So we're along the y-axis right here. So that's gonna be the point zero, two, zero. Now in the um, x, z plane, if you ignore the y variable, you're going to trace circle of radius two. So we can um, draw a circle of radius two. So I can go um, in x direction, we can go two units. Um, left and right, so we can do two units here, two units here. Then in the z-axis, we're also going to go two units up and down. So you can imagine drawing something of this style. So, and then I, I got these um, hyperbolas right here. So as you're going away from the center, it's bigger. So you got something of this style. 
And these are uh, circles that we're tracing. So something like this. So just giving you an idea how this looks like. So this is what we call an hyperboloid of one sheet. So hopefully you got the idea. This is just a picture or this surface is along the y-axis. Okay, so here's the last example we're going to work out. Again, try to put this in standard form by completing the square and then identify what kind of surface it is. So um, uh, x and y doesn't have, uh, they don't seem to have linear terms, so we're going to just leave them alone. You got negative x squared minus y squared. Now z has a linear term, so we can do completing the square for z. So we got plus z squared minus 8z, leave a space, 16, we move it to the other side. Now we take half of this and we square it. So half of negative 8, that's negative 4 u square, you get plus 16. We're going to add 16 to the other side. So now we got negative x squared minus y squared, and z will factor into z minus 4 all squared. Negative 16 plus 16 is 0. Now this doesn't look like in the standard form. So we're going to go ahead and um, try to move uh, terms around. So I'm going to go ahead and move the negative terms to the other side. So we can write x squared plus y squared is equal to z minus 4 squared. So I just moved them in a different direction. Now this is our standard form of the sur um, space uh, surface. Now this surface has center x coordinate 0 y coordinate 0, z coordinate 4. And the shape we're going to create, this is going to be a cone. So it's going to look like an infinite cone going through that center. So let's go ahead and sketch this. So this is actually very easy to sketch out of the surfaces that we have seen so far. So here's our x, y, and z. Let's call this x, y, and z. Here are the negative x's coming out. All right, so let's plot the center first. So we got 0, 0, 4. So in x is 0, y is 0, z is 4. Let's call this 4. So that's the center. And you, you're just going to draw a line passing through the center to create that cone. So something of this style. I'm just trying to adjust my picture so that it looks like this. So in x, y plane, as z is equal to a constant, you're going to trace um, circles or ellipses, if you want to say that. So we're going to have a cone that looks like this. So these are the traces that we're going to get. And the cone just continues on. And then here also we're going to trace uh, circles or ellipses. And the picture just continues on. So something like that continues forever. So that's that's our picture. I hope this makes sense. I didn't get to cover every surface in this video, but feel free to check out the other videos so that you're familiar with all six surfaces, quadric surfaces, and also cylinders. All right, uh, take care. See you next time.